Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da. Habatifillah, the question was asked, and this is a major question uh, that has been dealt with on many occasions uh, by the ulama of Ahl sunnah in contemporary times. <clears throat> and the question is, and I'm sure it's been translated oft as much uh, as well, and so the question is, what is the difference between minhaj and aqidah? What is the difference between the minhaj book, Usul al-Sunnah, and aqidah, uh, the aqidah book, Lumat, Lumat, Lumat al-Itiqad? And when they say follow the minhaj of the Salaf, do they mean follow them in aqidah? <coughs> First and foremost, like I said, this is a series, a series of series questions. And... The, there's a, an abundance of translated works, but we're going to just deal with this in the briefest way uh, and hopefully give uh, some uh, insight into these uh, questions. The difference between uh, Minhaj and Akida, first and foremost, <clears throat> the scholars, and I recall having a debate, or not a debate, but a good friend of mine, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him, uh, Adul Ubadi, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, I hope he's still alive in Yemen. One of my beloved brothers <clears throat> who looked out for me from Aden. And he used to say, when I we would talk about, you know, Minhaj and stuff like this, because he was a strong student of knowledge, and he fell out with a lot of the other brothers for various reasons and fitna that befell Ahlul Sunnah. And he used to say, why is it they don't have a, uh, use this term minhaj necessarily, in the universities? Tell me one Islamic university that has courses called minhaj, meaning minhaj uh, the way we use it as a term. And the point he's making uh, is first, as, as some of the, and, and he, the point he was making is that minhaj and aqid are one, Okay. And so you'll find that some of the scholars, they don't really distinguish between minhaj and aqidah. And you'll find others that do. And I believe, and uh, as uh, Imam Ahmed, Ahmed al-Najmi, rahmatullahi rahmatin wasiyah, he mentioned in his, uh, his book, and I have it, but I don't have time to go into it right now, but he mentioned a difference between aqidah and minhaj. And he mentioned that Akida, the creed, you know, this is referring to your the creedal tenets of Iman and, um, you know, all of those things, you know, and the, and, and the pillars of Iman, you know, as the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said when he was, when Jibreel asked in the hadith of Jibreel, he said, uh, you know, what is Iman? He said, He said that Iman, it is to believe in Allah, and His angels, and His books, and His messengers, and the, uh, uh, the day of judgment, and the divine destiny, the good and the bad of it. So that is a part of our Aqidah. That's a part of what we must believe as Muslims. That's what makes us Muslims. That's our aqidah. That's our creed. As far as the minhaj and what uh, Imam Ahmed, Imam Ahmed uh, Najmi, uh, what he mentioned is that minhaj is like a path for articulating the creed, meaning it's a path of da'wah is what he was saying. That So what it distinguishes, for example, Salafis from uh, a group like uh, Akhwana Muslimin or Jamaat Tablik is in their, one of the things is their minhaj. Obviously, there's differences in creed when it comes to generally to Jamaat Tablik, but Jamaat Tablik is not all Diobandi or not all like, like this. You may find people who have a Salafi creed in general, but they just support that Jamaat. They believe in going, making khuruj and doing this. But they believe the same about al-asma'i wa sifat and all the other tenets, even the issues of takfir and everything. And you might find a takfiri amongst them. You might find someone who worships graves amongst them. So they are a new dawa group. So they have a minhaj of collecting people together based upon their tenets in their Jamaat. 
Likewise, Akhwanah Muslimin also is not a, a sect, per se. Akhwanah Muslimin, and some of the scholars differ with this, but I, as Sheikh Salih Ali Sheikh mentioned, and Sheikh Obaid I rem has a different view and others, Mashaykh, but I think Sheikh Salih's uh, view, I hold his view and believe it's more, more correct, to say that they're not sects. They are rather, because they don't have a particular Akhidah, you can't say, oh, that's an Akhwani uh, Akhidah. You can't really say that because Akhwani Muslimin is comprised of people from different, you may have a Sufi who, ha, who has those Akhwani tenets and menhaj and methodology. So that brings up the point here, menhaj. So menhaj is a way of articulating that creed. It's a way how you give dawah to that creed. That's one way of looking at menhaj. Menhaj is, is a, uh, also distinguishes when we look at, for example, the, the not just the Ashadis, but all those, those sects that, uh, for example, they call Ahl Kalam, the people of, uh, that have, uh, uh, that make taqdeem al-aql al nakl They give preference to their rational, to rationality or rationalism over the, the actual text and how to understand those texts. This is a menhaj issue as well. This is, it, it reflects in Akita, so they're so intertwined. So it's not really uh, something that's going to affect your practice by knowing necessarily or going deep into this issue of taking a position of whether you believe they're the same or they're interrelated or one is distinct from another or what have you. Because it's not going to help you practice. So... Uh, these are higher level arguments uh, for the ulama. So what I will say is, is that's also when we talked about, you know, that's a menhaj issue. Now look at this and how it affects Akhida. So when you look at a lot of those, content, those groups with regards to like Ashadis and other Mu'attala groups that negate the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in their various forms or some that make, you know, all the ways that they deviate with regards to al-asma wa sifat there is a methodology difference on how they uh, how they view the Quran or how they go to the Quran for example ahl sunnah looks to they don't make taqdeem al uh, aql uh, al nakl but they have a, 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 a the opposite minhaj they give preference to the literal meaning of the text in general, okay, over their rationality. So when we say, for example, let's look at an example. When we say, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa, the most merciful, rose above his throne. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about himself, Tabarak wa ta'ala. He refers to himself, he's Ar-Rahman, that's one of his names, and that means he is the Sifa, or the characteristic of Rahma, okay? And when we say, and he said about himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he rose above his throne. Okay. Ahlul Sunnah says, okay, we accept that. We're not going to debate that. We're not going to argue that. We, we take that Allah uh, based upon its apparent meaning because our general menhaj, our general methodology of approaching the Quran is more literal, it's more literal, and I'm going to use more literal, and this is a very, I deal with this in my PhD thesis, but it's a big for us to get into this now. But the point is, I will say more literal. I won't say total literal, because there are times, you know, you know there's other issues at, at hand there, but, and you'll find, for example, Ashadis and stuff, in Arabic, they'll say, you know, they accept what's called as majazi, and you'll find this even in a lot of Asul of Fiqh books, and their way, so they look at things uh, through, uh, not analogy, but there's another word uh, for majaz, um, that it is not, uh, what's the opposite of uh, of taking the apparent meaning. So kind of taking a hidden meaning. I can't think of the word right now. But anyhow, these are methodological uh, differences in how to approach the Quran and how to interpret the Quran. 
I hope that's clear. So that's also a part of menhaj and methodology that makes whole different conclusions. So then they look at that same ayat that we mentioned and they'll say that uh, ar-Rahman ala ar istawa they'll say, well, we don't want to make a resemblance between the creator and the creation to say that he rises. How can you say that? Oh, Ahlul Sunnah, why are you saying that? This is what they're saying. Ahlul Sunnah says, no, we're saying that. So they say, no, if you say that, then you mean, so then they infer that Ahlul Sunnah is making tashbih or making a resemblance between Allah and his creation. But no, Ahlul Sunnah is not. So they are fleeing from this apparent tashbih that they believe and then they are rejecting the literal meaning and they're going to a majazi meaning. So then they begin to uh, interpret the text in a different way. Instead of taking the apparent meaning, they say, no, estoa means really, in its meaning, it means estola. So they give it a new, they actually change the, this is uh, tahrif in the ma'ana and tahrif in the actual uh, word, left thee, left thee wa ma'ni, wa ma'nawi. So they actually change the actual Arabic term and they change the meaning because they're scared of tishbi. We also reject tishbi, but we go by another qaida, ahl sunnah, that we say, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we kitab al kareem, wa laysa kamithlihi shayin wa huwa samiyun basir. There is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is uh, and he is the all seeing, uh, all hearing, and all seeing. Meaning, we affirm those, uh, we negate that there's any tashbi, and we affirm that he hears and sees. So we affirm those attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that he mentions about himself, and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the authentic Sunnah about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We affirm that. We don't reject that, nor do we make a tashbi. We affirm it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms it. They say, no, you need to reinterpret it so that way there's no resemblance. And we say, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ He affirms those, he affirms that he has these, he hears and he sees. You hear, you see, but your hearing and sight is not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hearing and sight is not like us. So this is a difference in menhaj and how you're looking at the text and all the implications, it affects Akida and it affects total practice. It can affect total practice because when you look at modernist groups that they take, they also, uh, you know, are more, you know, they run away from what they consider literalism and they go to, uh, you know, their, their way of interpretation to where they just interpret the whole, whole Quran is up to, you know, is up to their whims, really. And it becomes a whole loose and open interpretation to where all kind of things which we believe are clearly haram, that for them are clearly halal because of their interpretation. This is their methodology for approaching the Quran is different. Their menhaj of approaching and looking at the text, the divine text, the Quran, and maybe they even negate the sunnah or maybe they belittle the sunnah. That's a part of their menhaj. It's a part of their methodology. So this is a the difference there. Uh, the second part, you said, what is the difference between the Minhaj book? Uh, Asul al-Sunnah is uh, by Imam Ahmed, I'm assuming you're, you know, mentioning. And a lot of those Asul al-Sunnah books from some of the Salaf, some of the other uh, Imams that had books entitled Asul al-Sunnah, uh, that those books are Mujmal Aqidah, meaning... They're giving you a general studying of a lot of different messiah in, in creed from uh, they're dealing with, uh, they might deal with, you know, menhaj, the general menhaj, the menhaj of dealing with ahl bid'ah, the menhaj of, of, uh, of understanding the divine text, the menhaj, and then a creed of, of you know the the pillars of iman and a lot of pillars and, and the position of ahl sunnah with the issues of creed in general so they're going over many issues of creed whereas luma ta'tiqad also is like that though but it more some uh, some of the books are more they emphasize uh al asma al asma wa sifat the divine 
names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it just depends upon what the 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 writer, the author of the, the text, what his maqsud was, you know, what his intention was, and what he was dealing with, and why he wrote the book. Okay, it could have been a response, it could have been asked, you know, what is the creed of Ahl Sunnah? So he gives you a general book like Aqidah Tawasatiyah. However, Aqidah Tawasatiyah by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah also is mujmal. You know, it's, it's general, giving you the general itikad in many different issues. But there's a lot of emphasis when it comes to Tawheed in there. It's emphasizing Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat, the divine names and attributes. He spends a lot of time uh, writing about those those issues, because those were the issues the people of Ahl Bid'ah were bringing doubtful uh, matters in his, in the context of his time. So then you'll find in later books, like in especially books that are written, you know, in the past couple hundred years, from a lot of our scholars in the past hundred years, hundred, two hundred years, or what have you, uh, you'll find a lot of times they emphasis emphasize Tawheed al Ibadah, like Kitab al Tawheed. Kitab al-Tawheed, you don't really find al-Asma, the divine names and attributes as uh, spe specializing in that book. And a lot of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, his books, they are, he emphasis, emphasizes Tawheed al-Ibadah, the Tawheed of worship. Because in his time, in the context of his times, a lot of the people of desires were uh, innovating, not with regards to the divine names and attributes of Allah as much, per se, but there was a greater need to write and defend the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah with regards to Ibadah because the people were deviating in their worship. They began to grave worship. They began to deviate in these matters. So this is where you find a difference with some of those books. Uh, and when they say follow the minhaj of the Salaf, do they mean follow them in Aqidah? So again, this goes back to, it depends who, who's talking about it, but it, 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 the point is, is it's all encompassing. The minhaj of the Salaf it refers to the Aqidah, and it refers to the methodology of how we approach those texts. So it refers to all those, uh, all kind of Messiah, everything from position, the, as we mentioned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about the pillars of Iman, uh, the, the pillars of Iman, and also things like the, the position of the Sahaba, how Ahl Sunnah views the Sahaba and loves the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anu majma'een, and all of these, and, you know, and, and who... Uh, gives preference over who with regards to the love for the Sahaba and, and, and so on and so forth and the Khalifa and all of these Masail. So I hope that that's uh, something that will be beneficial. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.